Okay. Now, um, that surprises me a little bit because actually, usually in physics, it, it's oftentimes conventional to just always choose counterclockwise as positive. Um, it, it, I think your textbook mentions this. It, it's oftentimes conventional to just choose um, counterclockwise as positive, but it looks like your instructor um, isn't really following that pattern. So, he asked, he asked, which one do you, what do you want it to be, right. positive or negative? That's and fine. I, I, I was the one that said positive. Okay, that's fine. All right, so in that case, it looks like we'll just choose for each problem ourselves which, which one we okay. want. So that's fine. Now, so um, make a choice on this problem. Would you like clockwise or counterclockwise to be positive? It doesn't really matter which one, so just make a choice. Yeah, this is easier in your head. To me, clockwise in my head is easier. That's fine. Positive. Okay. Now, it's very important to always write down your positive direction. Yes. Um, so, um, now, how would we write down a positive rotational direction? You would write it like this. Do you see how this represents clockwise being positive. If we wanted counterclockwise to be yes. positive, we would write it like this. Okay. So obviously this is a lot different from when we were dealing with x and y axes. Now we have a rotational as a positive. All right, so we've decided to choose clockwise as our positive direction. Now what type of torque are we going to be getting from this force, clockwise or counterclockwise? Now the way to figure that out is just focus on F perpendicular, because remember that only F perpendicular is going to be causing rotation. Is F perpendicular going to be rotating this, uh, this teeter-totter clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise. Yes. That should it's be clear. Right, the left is going to go up, so that's right. clockwise. Yeah. yeah, that's why it was so important to see that the F perpendicular was pointing down. So it's always important to put the arrows on the components of your forces. Um, since it's pushing down, uh, that would tend to push us clockwise. So is that a positive torque or a negative torque? So that would be positive. Because we chose clockwise to be positive. So now we can finish off figuring out the torque here. We figured out that the torque is positive 19 newton meters. Positive 19 newton meters. Um, Okay, so those are um, uh, the, the various steps that go into uh, calculating the torque. So we'll need to get uh, some more practice with that. So now we've basically got the formula for torque. Uh, the formula for torque here is basically uh, F perpendicular times R. Would you remind me, what does F perpendicular stand for? It is the, it's the vector of the force. It's a force vector. Um, it's F perpendicular. It's it's just that force vector going um, perpendicular to the rate to the R vector. Okay, good. So you ended up there with a, a pretty good definition. So we would say that it's the component of the force that's perpendicular to the R vector. F perpendicular is the component okay. of the force that's perpendicular to the R vector. Let's just make sure that's clear because that's an important idea. So you tell me one more time, what does F perpendicular stand for? the component of the force that's perpendicular to R. Okay, good. And we can see that from our picture over here. All right. Um, by the way, how did we find F perpendicular? Oh, let me ask you real quick. Perpendicular to R, the distance, not... Right? It's perpendicular R to the R the vector. Distance. Remember, we talked about vector, the R vector, vector earlier. Okay, yeah. The R yeah, vector is right. the vector that goes from the axis of rotation to the point of application to of the force. The, to the point, okay, of application. Okay. In this case, you can see from our picture, the R vector was horizontal, and so the F perpendicular yeah. vector was ver uh, was uh, perpendicular to that. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, um, notice that in order to find F perpendicular, we had to use some trigonometry over here, um, and we discovered that it wasn't the whole 8 newtons that was causing the rotation. It was only the 2.7 newtons that fed into the torque because the other portion of the force was, would have been the parallel component. Now, notice that you, you figured out that you had to use the sine function here, right? You yes. had to use the sine function. So sometimes people actually use the sine function as part of the definition of the torque. Sometimes people would say something like... Yes, I see that in the book, so right. I was... They yeah. might say something like this, and then they would just say F times sine theta, because F times sine theta, uh, I sh I'll write it like this. F times sine theta um, would be F perpendicular. So these two equations are really the same thing because we know 
we the way that okay. we found f perpendicular is to do f sine theta. However, uh, I think that the formula that we used is really much better for a beginning student. Um, and okay. the reason is that you don't always use the sine function. Whether you use the sine function or the cosine function depends on what angle you've been given. In this case, we were given an angle where right. it was convenient to use the sine to find f perpendicular, but on some problems it might be more convenient to use the cosine. Uh, usually you use the sine. I guess if you had to take a random guess, you would use the sine, but the only way to know for sure is to really draw the picture out. So really this formula actually can be uh, misleading to a beginning student, so we're not really going to use that. Yeah. Instead, we'll just work out f perpendicular okay. separately each time. That, that way we're less likely to make mistakes. So I, I just wanted to mention that because you might see the instructions use that or see that in the textbook. I'm going to erase this formula now and we'll use the R, the, uh, the F perpendicular formula. Okay, so let's uh, erase some of this. So what do we need to do to find the torque? Uh, let's see. So uh, step one, you have to draw the force vector. Step two, you have to identify the pivot. Step three, you have to draw the R vector. And remember, where does the R vector come from and where does it go to? It goes from the from the pivot, pivot mm -hmm. to the point of uh, force. To the point where the or force the is being applied. Exertion. Yeah, the yeah, point of application the of the force. Applied. So you can see why this has to be step mm -hmm. three. You can't draw R until you've done steps one and two, because until you've done steps one and two, you don't know where the pivot is, and you don't know where the force is being applied. Okay. Then you draw F perpendicular. Um, what does F perpendicular stand for again? Uh, it is the component of the force that's perpendicular to the R vector. So you can see why we had to do steps uh, one through three, three first of all. You can't figure out F perpendicular until you know where F and R are. Right. Good. Yep. All right. Uh, then step okay. five, you can determine the sign. of the torque, because you can figure out whether it's a clockwise torque or a counterclockwise torque. Okay. And then step six, the magnitude of the torque is the magnitude of F perpendicular times the magnitude of the R vector. So remember that I like to use a dot to indicate when we're just focusing on magnitudes. So, so this step six here is just giving us the magnitude. We use the magnitude of the F vector and the magnitude of the R vector. That gives us the magnitude of the torque. We already figured out the sign on our own from step five. Okay. So you wouldn't know where, uh, like the problem we just did, you wouldn't know if you had a picture of this. Mm -hmm. Just with just the arrow force going down, you wouldn't be able to identify your... Well, R will usually be given, right? R? Mostly. I mean, unless... Yeah. Well, the distances are usually well, given to you. That's right. That's what yeah. I mean. Yeah. So that'll usually be given to you. In fact, you. I did okay. give it to you in that problem, right? Uh, eventually, I gave you what the distance right, was. Right. Seven meters. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. So one thing to notice is it's actually pretty hard to find the torque. There's six steps, so you really have to take your time and go through the steps uh, slowly and carefully uh, to see how to find the torque. And this is the, the method that we basically used on the last problem. Can you see how we went through all these steps in the last problem? Yes. Okay. All right, and the bad news is there's a, a second way to find the torque as well that you'll sometimes need for some problems. So there's actually two different ways okay. to find the torque uh, that we need to be uh, familiar with.